Hey guys, this is Travis Elliott and welcome to Yin Yoga from PY108, my brand new 108 day power yoga program geared towards intermediate students. This program is now streaming on Interdimension TV. For those of you that are really passionate about Yin Yoga, I highly recommend checking out my other program, Flexibility and Beyond, an eight week Yin Yoga program, and also my Yin Yoga Sleep Well series. When you sign up for an Interdimension TV membership, you'll get access to all my programs, all my series, and all my classes. So I'll put a link down below at the top of the comment section where you can start a 10-day free trial if you're interested. That's it for now. I hope you enjoy your practice. Everybody and welcome to uh, Yin Yoga. You're definitely in for a treat in this one. Let's go ahead and get started in child's pose. And we'll just take uh, just a minute or two in this opening child's pose before we slip into our first official Yin yoga posture, holding these poses for about three to five minutes and really uh, slowing things down to a whole other level and not just our body, but also our brain waves. Persian poet Rumi said, be still, be quiet. Find acquaintance with silence. Go inside and delve into your heart. And that's really what this practice is all about. It's about going deep, deep, deep within. The same way there's a force of gravity that's weighing us all down. The yogis also believe that there's a force that when we close the eyes, when we turn inward and when we let go, when we surrender, that pulls us deep in with ourselves into our, our center, what T.S. Eliot described as our inner still point. and to be the still point within the turning of the world. So in a very, very slow yin-like way, the poses will be turning again about every three to five minutes. This gives us a little bit of time to get into those connective tissues. to invoke that healing medicine within the deep internal fascial matrix and to bring a level of restoration into our joints, our tendons, our ligaments, our bones. And it all starts right here, right now just by giving yourself permission to indulge within a practice that's not about burning calories or increasing muscle tone. It's so much deeper than all of that. And if you're newer to Yin, it might not be that easy. As Blaise Pascal said, all of humanity's problems stem from their inability to sit quietly in a room alone. Your yin yoga practice is a little bit like a mirror and it's gonna reflect whatever's going on inside of you. Sometimes what's going on inside of us 
isn't the easiest thing to face. But when we realize the wisdom that all things are impermanent, then we begin to have the capacity to move through whatever comes up for ourselves, to no longer run away from it, but to be with it, to witness it, to watch it, to observe it. From here, nice and easily, just come all the way up to all fours, tabletop position, and we'll segue into our first, first official yin pose. And just as a way to transition into it, tuck the toes, lift the hips, downward facing dog. And then lift your right leg up off the ground. And then swing the right foot gently forward all the way to the top of your yoga mat as you release your left knee all the way down onto the mat, release the top of the left foot. And then bring both hands to the inside of your right foot, maybe even sliding the right foot over towards the right. And then as you're ready, start to bend the elbows and maybe you grab a block or a bolster or some props to go underneath the forearms to help raise the floor to meet you. Because although you are looking for some sensation of stretch, you definitely don't want to overdo it. So you, you go about 40 to 50% of your capacity. And then that way it's not too much. It's something that you can sustain. So the first phase of the yin pose is simply to just find the edge. And that edge is totally personal to you. And then the second phase of the yin pose is to become as still as possible. It's okay to move and to make adjustments. Just make sure that the movements are, are done in a conscious, mindful way. They're not unconscious, fidgety movements. And then the third phase is to just yield. Yield to time three to five minutes, hanging out in the pose, letting the breath pass easily in and out through the nose. And just witnessing and watching whatever arises and also whatever passes. this point in the yin pose, about halfway through it, there's the phase change where you begin to move from the superficial muscles to that deeper fascial matrix. So profound how you get into the connective tissues that connect everything from the surface of the skin all the way down to the nucleus of all the cells in your body. And those connective tissues are what holds the whole entire body together like an intricate web of crystallized tissue. When you apply that slow, sustained pressure into that web of tissue, it not only benefits that area, 
but it also benefits all the other areas through those connected channels. The yogis call nadis and the Taoists call meridians. here nice and easily begin to transition all the way back up onto your hands bring the right hand to the outside of your right foot and then go ahead and heel toe heel toe your right foot all the way over towards the left side of your yoga mat allow the right knee to flare open towards the right side setting up for a sleeping swan and if you want, you can always take a, a prop and you can slide that underneath the right hip for support. If you have a bolster, you can even set that underneath your chest. So feel free to use those props in a way that sets you up for, for comfort, for ease. After about three minutes or so in that previous dragon pose, now three minutes in the sleeping swan, it's the same area, but a slightly different angle. There's a Zen proverb that says, only when you can be soft and pliable, can you also be hard and strong. So one thing that people don't realize that struggle with yin is how much it benefits what usually they so love to do, whether that's a power yoga flow or maybe running or something more strenuous and invigorating, something yang like in nature. The Tao has figured out a long time ago that the yin feeds the yang and the yang feeds the yin. We need both in a balanced way. So you've been moving through this 108 day program. Some of these classes have been so vigorous and rigorous, so yang like in nature that it only makes sense to explore the other end of the spectrum. So let's complement those power yoga practices with this deep, slow, still, quiet, sensuous yin practice. periodically within a practice like this, very similar to a meditation practice. There might be that experience where you notice the mind slipping into virtual reality mode of thinking. Thoughts, fantasies, tangents of thinking. 
like the mind somehow just slipped into a whole, whole other dimension, a whole other world. Just like in your power yoga practice, the name of the game is presence. So if and when you do notice the mind drifting away, can you gently draw, draw the awareness back to the pose? And one tool or one practice that's simple but very effective of reinforcing that is to, in that moment, take a deeper inhale through the nose. And it's almost like you're reining your attention back in. As the Buddha said, rule your mind, otherwise your mind will rule you. So at the same time, you're giving yourself the gift, the gift of yin on a physical level. There is that mental component of also strengthening and reinforcing presence. In fact, in many ways, a yin yoga practice is a great way to prepare for longer meditation practice. A lot of similarities there. Nice and easily go ahead and ease your way all the way up onto your hands. Taking your time, shift your weight into that outer right hip and swing your left leg all the way around towards the front. And with the sole of the right foot to your inner left thigh for the half butterfly pose. Take both arms and reach those all the way up above you. And then exhale, fold all the way over and down. Stretching some of the tissue across the back of your left leg. Some of the tissue with the muscles that run along the spine. you come into these shapes, see if you can do it in a very relaxed way. If we're engaging those exterior superficial muscles, then it's hard to access the deeper tissue underneath it. So it's almost like your superficial muscles is a type of armor. And although we might need that armor in other forms of fitness or even in the world, our yin yoga practice is an opportunity to set the armor aside. Which means to maybe be a little bit more vulnerable than normal. But the container has been set. You're in the safety of this bubble of your yoga practice. There's no roles or responsibilities other than the role of just stripping it all away. So there you are, just in that pure, authentic self. Sometimes when the armor gets set aside, emotions can begin to arise, emotions that have been stuffed inside of you. We know that the body keeps the score and everything that you move through and experienced in your life gets lodged and stored up within the tissues of the body. It's almost like your body is a blueprint of every single thing you've ever moved through an experience.
So in yin yoga, it's a little bit like you're an archaeologist digging into the earth of the body. But instead of searching out artifacts, you're searching out things that have gotten lodged within that are no longer serving. Physical tension, repressed emotion. And it doesn't have to happen, but if you do start to get a little teary-eyed at any point, whether it's this yin yoga practice or a future one, just know that that's actually a beautiful thing. Those are called the tears of the way. The way to transformation. The way to awakening. Nice and easily, go ahead and come all the way back up. From here, bring your right knee to face the sky, and then draw your right foot back by the outer right hip, right thigh. And then for this one, it, it may, again, it may feel a little intense, it's personal, but you can always put a prop to go underneath your left sit bone, a block, a blanket. And if it's intense, you just stay right there, just sitting up. But some people, it may feel good to lean back onto the hands or the forearms. Or you may see some of our students here just using a bolster, which could be really nice if you have one of those to lean back onto that bolster, which is a great way of opening up the chest and the lungs and the heart. In yoga, we have uh, pain and we have discomfort. Pain is when we lose integrity in a joint or we're pinching a nerve. But discomfort is similar to what you may experience on a massage table. You're just exposing some knots, some tensions, some kinks. So naturally, you want to avoid the pain, but a little bit of discomfort can be a really good thing. Because the body has an intelligence. And when the intelligence encounters just the right amount of stress or pressure, the body goes to work to make those tissues that are encountering that pressure and that stress to become more resilient so the next time it encounters a similar force of stress, it can handle it more easily. So it does that by making the tissue stronger but also more durable and elastic. And this is why yin yoga is often described to be the fountain of youth. Keeping that body just, just strong, supple, and youthful. And much more likely to be injury free.
you're leaning back, slowly begin to transition all the way back up, but just taking your time. As if you're just moving slow like molasses. As you get up to seated, just ever so slightly lean over to the left and extend the right leg out towards straight. Let the blood have a moment to rush through that right knee joint. And from here, reach down, grab your left foot, left ankle, and just set it on top of your right knee setting up for fire log pose or in power yoga, what we call double seated pigeons. So bend the right foot to come underneath your left knee, left eye. You could always modify again, just crossing the left shin in front of the right shin. And reach those arms all the way up to the sky above you. And then just fold over and down just to your own perfect degree. And it's totally fine if some of these poses don't feel perfect for you. It's totally fine if your pose doesn't look like what somebody else's poses look like. The model on the cover of a magazine, the student in the yoga video, the person next to you in that yoga studio, they just look so perfect within their pose. Please have the wisdom to embrace all of you, including your imperfection. There was an older monk that every afternoon would walk from the temple down to the river with two buckets to go pick up water. But one of the buckets had a few small holes in it. So naturally, the water would leak out through the holes onto the ground. And one afternoon, a younger monk asked the older monk, why do you continue to carry the, the bucket with the broken holes? And the older monk responded, if I didn't have the holes in the bucket, the water wouldn't fall into the ground. And the young monk looked along the path and where the water would flow every single afternoon were beautiful wildflowers everywhere. So yoga teaches us to embrace our imperfections. It's part of the human experience. At some point, we definitely encounter that within our poses and within our practice. from here, slowly exit out of that one. 
As you're ready, crossing the shins over top each other, roll over onto all fours, tabletop position. Slide the knees back three or four inches behind the hips. And then hip circles just begin to move, move the hips, move the body. And just big, big circles is a way to enhance what you just did. And as you're ready, reverse it the other way if you haven't already. Back to your downward facing dog, tucking the toes, lifting those hips back up, taking a few moments to walk out the dog should feel nice as well. And then left leg up on the inhale. Left foot top of the mat on the exhale, release the right knee down onto the floor. Both hands to the inside of your left foot as you scoot the left foot over to the left. Grabbing your props here if you like. Starting to bend the elbow, starting to climb deep into that left hip. For your dragon pose on the other side. Just taking it one moment at a time. In fact, Zen has been described as just doing simply one thing at a time, which of course is the opposite of multitasking, which neuroscience is now affirming is an incredibly unproductive way of doing anything. So we do one thing at a time. It's called single tasking. And in yoga, that's called Eka Grata. It's the one point in mind. So it's almost like my mind and my focus becomes like a laser. And wherever I decide, wherever I choose to direct that laser is completely up to me. Shine that laser deeper and deeper within you, deeper within the mind, deeper within the body, deeper within the heart. Almost as if you're bringing light, the light of awareness to what is unconscious, what has been hidden. And anything that you expose to the light becomes revealed, it becomes seen. In shamanism, they call it seeing the dragon. You can't fight something that you can't see. You can't address something that you don't even know is there. It's unconscious.
head slowly come all the way back up onto your hands. Bring the left hand to the outside of your left foot, left leg. Scoot that left foot all the way across the mat, all the way over towards the right. As you relax that outer left knee all the way over towards the left. Setting up for sleeping swan on the other side. Allowing that torso to drape out over top that front left leg. Usually at this point, I'm in a whole other zone than when I began my practice. It's almost like I've moved from time into the timeless, from form into the formless, from the finite to the infinite to the eternal. that's it for that one go ahead and come all the way back up onto your hands when you're ready lean into the left hip swing the right leg all the way around towards the front setting up for that half butterfly pose reach those arms all the way up on the inhale Begin to fold all the way over and down on the exhale. Nowhere to get to, nowhere to go, nothing to do. Also, nothing to achieve. All I gotta do is just be. Be with the breath. Be with that constellation of sensation. Observe how it arises. 
to observe how it disappears and dissipates. So ephemeral, so fleeting. Take a last few breaths there. Good, slowly come all the way back up. Bring the left knee back up towards the sky. Bend the left foot back by that outer left hip. Maybe putting a prop to go underneath that right glute, that right hip. Maybe setting up a bolster behind you. Just beginning to lean back onto the hands, the forearms, the elbows or to stay upright if that feels more appropriate. There was a Zen master that loved to take his students through walks in nature because he knew that within nature were so many of the most profound lessons. And so one evening they were on a walk when they encountered a, a poisonous tree that bore poisonous fruits. And so the Zen master looked at his students and he said, you know, there's really three types of people in this world, depending on how far they are along their spiritual path. The first person looks at that poisonous tree there and the first thing that they want to do is to cut it down, to get rid of it because they function out of a place of ignorance. They just don't know better. But then you have people that have traveled a little bit further down the path. And what they want to do is they want to keep the tree alive. They want to protect it, but they want to put a fence around it so that people don't eat the poisonous fruit. So for them, their fear is transformed from ignorance and fear into compassion. But then you have somebody that's moved even further down the path. And when they see that poisonous tree, what they want to do is they want to study it. They want to get to know it. And then they use the fruit and they mix it with ingredients that neutralize its harmful effects. And they use it as a form of medicine to heal others. And these are the awakened ones. So much of this program is about making it to that third stage. 
so that when we encounter difficult people in our lives or people with different perspectives, we don't cut them down. But we listen, we give them the, the gift of attention. And we provide an environment of benevolence. And perhaps, maybe, we get to transform the poison into the medicine within others. Very often we can do this just by embodying in ourselves, which is why Gandhi said, be the change that you want to see in the world. You want to see more compassion in the world, you got to embody that within you. You want to see more tranquility in the world, you got to embody that and feed that within you. You want to see more unconditional love in the world, you got to strengthen that within you. As the famous Indian sage Neem Karoli Baba says, love is the strongest medicine. Nice and easily, go ahead and come all the way back, back up. Lean over to the right, extend that left leg straight out in front of you. Might feel a little discomfort as you come out of that one. And then reach down, grab your right foot, lift it up, place the right ankle on top of that left knee. And as you're ready, fire log pose, bend the left foot to come underneath the right knee, right thigh as we continue to go bone deep. Once you get set up, inhale, reach the arms up. And then fold over and down. Oh, 
awesome, you guys. That one is history. Slowly ease your way back up. Extend the legs back out towards straight. From here, we'll turn and rotate the body to face the left side of the space, setting up for dragonfly. So open the legs out. And when you're ready, just begin to hinge over and down. Feel free to use any props here if you like. Sometimes you can create a little ramp, a block, a bolster. Hands can be out in front of you, or you can reach the hands out and grab your legs, your feet as leverage. And then how about we give those inner legs and those inner thighs that deep yin touch. Dragonfly pose. Slowly begin to transition your way out of the dragonfly. Bring both legs all the way forward towards the front of your yoga mat. And the last seated yin pose is caterpillar. So both arms lift all the way up. Fold all the way over and down. So sweet to end a long, busy day with the yin yoga practice. Sometimes we might have to do it in the morning or the afternoon, but something about doing it right before bed just prepares the nervous system and the brain and the mind for a really, really deep night's sleep. And then after that good night's sleep, waking up feeling so refreshed and ready for whatever's coming our way that next day.
The same way that movement done with awareness is medicine for your body. Stillness is medicine for the mind. and easily begin to transition all the way back up. Slowly release all the way down onto your back, all the way down onto your yoga mat. Come into a final resting position, corpse, and if you want, you can always slide the bolster to go right underneath your knees. Take your time to find that final resting position so you feel perfectly situated in place. Vanilla Norris says within each of us there is a silence as vast as the universe. And when we experience that silence, we remember who we are. For these last few minutes, see how vast and still you can become. Shavasana.
Everybody nice and easily. Take a deeper inhale through the nose. Out the mouth, exhale, let it go. Place one hand on your belly, one hand over your heart. Just taking a moment to give gratitude to your yin practice for bringing you back to the wisdom of balance, of stillness, of wholeness. To give gratitude to this body supporting you through this PY-108 journey. All right, that's it for this one. Keep showing up, stay strong, stay empowered, and thank you for your practice. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed that yin yoga practice from the PY-108 program. Drop me a comment down below and let me know how it was. Remember to hit that subscribe button. And if you're interested in more high quality, transformative yoga, meditation, and daily wisdom, head over to Inner Dementia TV to start that 10 day free trial. Thank you again for your practice and I'll see you next time.